Now, to get information about Hanukkah, we have to jump over to the book of Maccabees. Um, first, Maccabees talks about it, um, talks about how it was started. It, it goes into great detail about a man named Antiochus Epiphanes and the first abomination of desolation that, you know, he did back there um, um, on uh, December the 25th of the year 160. BC, but that day just so happens to fall on the 25th day of the ninth month, that month that's called Keslev or Keslu. We just did a class not too long ago where we actually uh, went in using a website that we had found that showed us um, the phase of the moon in 168 BC. And turns out that Antiochus Epiphany has actually put the abomination of desolation on the altar there in Jerusalem on Christmas Day. Now, in that class, we talked about how Hanukkah was actually the replacement for that festival that Antiochus was doing. He was, of course, celebrating uh, the sun, the sun god. He was participating in sun god worship as, as, and part of um, um, the rituals that they did was to sacrifice a pig. And the thing about it, he chose um, the altar there at the temple in Jerusalem to sacrifice that pig. And it and it he did so on December uh, the 25th. All right. So, like I said, we're going to jump down through um, the scripture here. I want to get this class out pretty quickly because people are waiting on it and we're getting pretty close to those days. So I'm going to try to get this all done in one shot. So bear with me and all of the errors and stuff as we go down through here. But anyway, so we're looking in Second Maccabees and chapter 10. And we're going to start here at verse 5. It says, Now upon the same day that the strangers profaned the temple, on the very same day that it was cleansed again, even the five and twentieth day of the same month, which is Keslu. Now, like I said, he, Antiochus, he done this devilish act as he was participating in sun god worship or their winter festival where they celebrate the winter solstice. And they always do that on December uh, the 25th. They've been doing that even back to the Jeremiah and chapter 10 days um, where they've been, you know, doing this actually um, that winter solstice day goes back to Nimrod actually. Um, but we know that day as Christmas um, because the name, of course, was changed by the Roman Empire after Constantine came in and did very did almost the same exact act that Antiochus Epiphanes did. But, you know, we'll cover that in, a, in another class. But the, the point I want to make out as far as um, this verse is concerned is how um, Hanukkah replaced that. Uh, that um, that day it replaced Christmas. I, I don't. I, I hesitate to call it Christmas because it adds a little bit of confusion because it wasn't known as Christmas um, in 168 BC, 168 years before the Christ. It wasn't known as Christmas, but it was the same December the 25th celebration that we know today as Christmas. And the thing about it, you see here in this verse that Hanukkah was created. It was instituted to fall on the exact Exact same day. Now it doesn't fall on December the 25th. It actually falls on the, uh, like we see here, the five and 20th day of Keslev or Kislu, which of course changes, you know, every year. This year it happens to fall on uh, December the 10th and it goes through the 18th. Um, what's interesting is that, that in the year 2024, um, the fifth day of Kaslu will actually fall on December the 25th. And I think that's kind of, you know, interesting. Um, we'll, we'll be paying particularly a close attention to that as we get closer to the year 2024, that those days coincide. But anyway, Let's go on because in this class, we want to know what it is that we're supposed to be doing on that day. You see right there in verse six, it says, and they kept the eight days with gladness and in the as in the Feast of Tabernacles, remembering that not long before they had held the Feast of Tabernacles when they wandered in the mountains and dens like beasts. OK, so here it is. 
this is this is what it is how it is that we are supposed to celebrate hanukkah is just telling us that we are to celebrate it as in the feast of tabernacles so keep that in mind because we're going to hear that word several times because uh tabernacles is a or hanukkah is a tabernacles type festival it's like we are redoing tabernacles in the ninth month um doing the, the um, we're going to see here we're doing almost the same things um that we were doing during tabernacles when we compare what we see here in um uh, Maccabees and 10 to Leviticus and 23 and Deuteronomy and 16. We're going to jump over there and look at those as we try to, you know, be comprehensive on what it is that we're actually supposed to be doing on this day. All right, let's go on to verse seven. It says, therefore, they bear branches and fair bows and palms also and sang psalms unto him that had given them good success in cleansing his place. Okay, so here it is. Uh, we know that it is a tabernacles type festival, but if you are um, aware of how it is that you do tabernacles, you see that this is the exact same thing that we're going to see over there in Leviticus 23 and Deuteronomy chapter 16 is that they're taking the branches of goodly trees. Um, we live on a homestead here um, in Alabama. We have, uh, I would guess, 5,000, maybe even 10,000 trees here on this property. And, you know, what we'll be doing, just like tabernacles, is we'll go out and we'll find the, the good trees. Not all of these trees are good. Some of these trees on this property are, you know, almost useless, you know, except for firewood or whatever, um, like a sweet gum tree. I don't know what to do with that. But, you know, um, we do have other trees that are good. You know, um, we have uh, pecan trees, we have cherry trees, we have orange trees, and we'll go out there and we'll get branches off of these trees. And we'll walk around with them, even uh, the oak trees, because they provide so much food for the animals around. We consider that a goodly tree. And, you know, um, my family and I will have handfuls of um, these uh, branches of these trees and we'll walk around and we'll sing psalms. We, we have songs that we sing as we march around the property. Um, we're singing and being joyful for uh, these eight days, just like we did during the Feast of Tabernacles. Verse 8 says, They ordained also by common statute and decree that every year those days should be kept of the whole nation of the Jews. Now, so this is when this festival was instituted. And so I do want to jump over here and show you in the book of uh, uh, John and chapter 10, um, how the Messiah actually uh, kept these days as well. You see that in John uh, chapter 10 and verse 22, and it says, and it was at Jerusalem, the feast of the dedication, and it was winter. So this is talking about the Messiah here and how he actually kept the feast of dedication or the feast of Hanukkah. The word Hanukkah actually means dedication. When you look in some concordances, you will see a Hanukkah in place of dedication. It's actually the dictionary definition of the word is dedication. And so you see here, you see the Messiah walking around in Solomon's porch uh, during that festival. The thing about it, um, the Messiah didn't live in Jerusalem. You know, he lived in uh, Nazareth or Galilee or somewhere, which was pretty much an eight hour walk. So for him to have made an eight hour walk to get to Jerusalem lets you know the importance of that holy day. And, you know, there's something odd about it, too, when you look back at Tabernacles, how he told the disciples that it wasn't yet his time and he didn't want to participate in Tabernacles, even though he did show up midweek. He told them something about it wasn't yet his time. But yet we see here here in um, during the Feast of Hanukkah or during the Feast of Tabernacles, and he gives a pretty good sermon. I would advise you to go in and check out uh, uh, John and chapter 10 as we prepare for Hanukkah or maybe even during Hanukkah so we can see this sermon that the Messiah gave during that time. 
um, some important stuff that he talked about, maybe even spills over into uh, John in chapter 11. Matter of fact, that just caught my eye when you remember the story of Lazarus. So I, I studied this at one time and it almost appears as though the whole Lazarus being raised from the dead happened during the week of Hanukkah, you know, and, you know, and we're, we're thinking about, you know, in this time, we're not really thinking about a brick and mortar temple. We're thinking about our third temple, that third, that temple that is to be built on the hearts of humanity. And so we're thinking about the dedication of that third temple. Well, this goes on, you know, when we're look, thinking about Lazarus and the connection between the dedication of the, our third temple. And and Hanukkah, you know, to me, it reminds me of that old story back in the Old Testament. I can't remember what book it is right now, but it talks about how those dry bones were um, resurrected. Um, you probably remember where he blew the breath of life in those, you know, bones and brought them back to life. Well, this kind of, you know, seems to all fit together, but you know, we'll, we'll handle that in another class. Like I said, um, in this class, we want to focus more on what it is that we're actually supposed to be doing during that day. Um, and reading those verses may be a good thing to be doing during those days. Of course, reading scripture is one of the best things we can be doing uh, during uh, any feast day. And this one is is a joyous occasion, so we'll be singing songs and all of that. And while I'm thinking about it, you know, this 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 day falls around um, uh, Christmas time, and so a lot of people, you know, if I if if I get a chance to, I'll go through you know some of my old MP3s and I'll find you know some of those songs you know about the Messiah. Um, and, and play those, you know, they, I won't play any Jingle Bell songs or any, you know, any Merry Christmas songs, but there are, you know, songs about the Lamb of God that, you know, we'll be using as we, you know, celebrate this, this eight day celebration. And that's what it's all about, you know, so we want to, you know, bring out, you know, anything that can help us to get in a joyous mood and, you know, music does a long way, uh, goes a long way to do that for us. But anyway, um, you're looking here at Second Maccabees and chapter one. We're going back. We was in chapter ten. We're gonna jump back in chapter one, and you'll see why here in a second. We're looking at verse nine, and you see right there it says, "And now see that ye keep the feast of tabernacles in the month Keslu." Now today, as I was preparing for this class, was the first time that this verse actually jumped out at me. It's like it's it's like it's changing. Tabernacles. It says, um, "Keep the feast tabernacles in Keslu." Not saying it, it ain't really saying keep it like you did uh, tabernacles, as it's saying, implying that tabernacles is moved. Now, of course, I'll never move tabernacles. I will always keep it in the seventh month. But I thought this was interesting. Um, you know, especially in this these times that we're in now, waiting for this great awakening and all of these, you know, spiritual evolve, you know, evolution that we're waiting on. You know, there was a lot of people who was expecting, you know, a lot of stuff to go on during Tabernacles of 2020. You know, but you know, here, um, you, you see right here, it says Tabernacles in Kaslu. So you know, it's like um, maybe at all. That everybody was anticipating back during uh, the seventh month during the Feast of Tabernacles should actually be project projected onto the ninth month during the Feast of Hanukkah. You know, so, you know, another thing you could do to prepare is go in and, you know, check our channel. We did several classes on tabernacles. And so you can just, you know, you know, while you're looking at a video that's entitled tabernacles, you can you can think that, you know, it could also be talking about Hanukkah. But anyway, let's jump down here to uh, verse 18 out of the same chapter one of Second Maccabees. It says, therefore, whereas we are now purposed to keep the purification of the temple upon the five and twentieth day of the month Kaslu, we thought it necessary to certify you thereof that ye also might keep it as the feast of tabernacles. And of the fire which was given us when Nehemiah offered sacrifice after that he had builded the temple and the altar. 
Okay, once again, it's, re it's repeating itself over and over. I, and the Bible does that when it's something's important. It's telling us over and over. You, you, you will, it, there's even other places where that we're not going to even talk about today how um, the the um, Feast of Hanukkah, the Feast of Dedication, is supposed to be like tabernacles. But the reason why I bring this verse out is what it says right there. Um, not only are we keeping it as the Feast of Tabernacles, but it says, and as the fire which was uh, given us when Nehemiah offered sacrifice after that he had built the temple and the altar. Now, um, I tried to find this story over in the book of Nehemiah. I'm still looking for it. I haven't given up on it yet. This fire that is actually talking about. But when you read down here in the rest of this chapter, you can actually see what it's talking about. Um, it talks about, you know, how, you know, these you, these Persians or these people that were um, uh, persecuting um, Israel at that time had hidden the fire from Nehemiah. Uh, and, um, it, and you know, when they went to find the fire, uh, they found some thick water. You see right there in verse 20, they did not find fire, but they actually found thick water. And then when you go on down here, Nehemiah told them to bring this water out and to pour it on the altar and the wood to sprinkle this water on the wood. And somehow <laughs> this water caught fire. I mean, this fire caught water. This water caught fire. It it it, it was like a, a miracle um, of how this water um, that he was sprinkling on this altar uh, turned into fire. You think of how it would have been, how hard it would have been back in those days to, you know, to get fire or whatever. Um, you know, it wasn't like they had lighters and matches. So it would have been a big deal when they, you know, was trying to um, do a sacrifice and they didn't have any fire to go on. But um, here it is. Somehow Nehemiah has has used water to to kindle a fire. The fire, you know, came from from I want to say from heaven um, and started there on the altar. But we can read up all about this story. We're going to come back to this because there was a certain prayer that he said there. And we're going to we're going to finish up with this prayer that he said um, towards the end or at the end of this video. Well, one thing that's really interesting as I've searched and tried to find out um, about how it is that we're celebrating the Feast of Hanukkah, we don't see anywhere in the scripture, in all of scripture, anything about lighting a menorah for eight days. Um, turns out that's not in the in the Bible at all, not even in the Apocrypha books where it talks about um, the whole lighting the menorah deal for eight days that actually came out of the Talmud it was actually you know um at least you know from what I understand I haven't read the Talmud or anything but it came later on it, it's not really a biblical part of the festival now I'm not saying it's wrong you know I don't I don't see any harm in doing it but it's not necessary either especially since most of us don't have a menorah you know or maybe not even know where to get one from it's not really even a part of the celebration as we have seen here that you know um we're supposed to do the feast of tabernacles as or, or the feast of of Hanukkah as we do the Feast of Tabernacles and then the only lighting or the only fire we see is over here in uh, 2 Maccabees and uh, chapter 1 as it's talking about Nehemiah all the way back during the time when they dedicated the first temple. So I thought that was interesting but we'll, we'll cover that whole fire thing in another class. Okay, so the next thing we want to do is want to jump over here to Leviticus chapter 23 when we first hear about the Feast of Tabernacles and compare it to what we have saw over in 2 Maccabees and how it is that we're supposed to be do Hanukkah. Um, we see in verse 34, it talks about how uh, Tabernacles falls on the 15th day of the seventh month. Um, we see right there in, in uh, verse 35, it says that it is a holy convocation and you shall do no servile work. So, um, and this is talking about the first day. So if we are to keep Hanukkah the same way we were to keep uh, Tabernacles, 
then the first day, December, starting on the evening of December the 10th and going into the evening of December the 11th will be a holy convocation. It will be like a Sabbath day um, um, and we will do no servile work therein, meaning no hard labor, no, you know, um, servile kind of means hard or hard work. So we may do stuff like cooking or something like that, um, but it it, it it won't be you know we this is, this is not a day we would go off to you know down to the mr charlie and punch out widgets you know um as we you don't do any any servile work during that time then you see right here in 36 it says seven days you shall offer an offering made by fire unto the lord and on the eighth day shall be a holy convocation unto you and you shall offer an offering made by fire unto the lord it is a solemn assembly and ye shall do no servile work now we have done several classes um, on this um, offering made by fire it means different things to different people when you look over in the book of Malachi in chapter 3 you see that the offerings are coming back you see that he's going to start with the Levites or the firstborn males and even females in the, in this era here and he's going to start with them and it, which, you know, though, of course, those were the people who were in charge of these offerings in the first place. But, you know, when the father decides he's going to start with the Levites and he's going to start to bring these offerings back. So there may be some Levites, you know, and others who are watching this video who are doing a literal burnt offering, whereas others are looking in Psalms at the book, um, at the book of Psalms and what, um, uh, um, uh, David talked about how he said, let his prayers and his uplifted hands be his offering. And so many people, this, this burnt offering would be kind of a spiritual offering, but either way, the point is, is that during Hanukkah, you will make this same type offering that you made during tabernacles, whatever, whatever it is that you did, unless you've grown spiritually in, you know, those few months, whatever it is you did during the feast of tabernacles, you would do similar to make this burnt offering for these seven days during the feast of Hanukkah and you see right there it says on the um the the eighth day I believe it said right there it says you shall do no servile work therein um we can read that closely as talking about the eighth day so the first day is a is a big day um um, it's a holy convocation and then on the eighth day is a big day that's a holy convocation as well and in between we'll see here in a second what we what you will be doing in between those two days it's right there verse uh 37 he says um these are the feast of the lord now like we talked about in hot and during the tabernacle season how there seems to be a break between um this this uh, what he talks about on what we're supposed to do during tabernacles he's talking about tabernacles in verse 36 verse 35 and he's in verse 34 but even um but when we look at verse 37 it appears that it he, he's talking about something else like he's rounding off all of the statutes that we're hearing about in uh uh, chapter 23 you see that goes on in in uh, verse 38 as well but then when you get to verse 39 you see he starts talking about tabernacles again and other things that apply to the feast of tabernacles it says also in the 15th day of the seventh month when you have gathered in the fruit of the land ye shall keep a feast unto the lord seven days on the first day shall be a sabbath and on the eighth day shall be a sabbath now i've always you know talked about this how this is a different type celebration now this could actually i'm sitting you know there's there's thoughts coming in my head now um you know i praise the father you know um you know that he will clarify them for me but it, it it it's like it's like the first part that we heard about up here very well could apply to Hanukkah and then maybe this one right here could or maybe it could not like I said I, these thoughts are brand new so maybe I need to wait on those before I expound on them but I'm just noticing how it says when you have gathered in the fruit of the land that's in that's in the fall you're not really gathering in much fruit of the land in the month of December but anyway I, I'll save that for another video it says um, 
you want to keep the feast unto the Lord seven days. Um, and, and then on the eighth day is a Sabbath. Now, um, read it. I'm going to scroll on to verse 40. It says, and ye shall take you on the first day, the boughs of goodly trees, branches of palm trees, and the boughs of thick trees, and the willows of the brook. And ye shall rejoice before the Lord your God seven days. So here it is, the exact same thing that we saw over in the book of Maccabees, that we are using these tree branches, and there is a rejoicing period for this entire eight days um, during the Feast of Tabernacles the same as during the feast of Hanukkah and so when it says that we are to keep the feast of Tab of Hanukkah like we feast to keep the feast of tabernacles this is what it's talking about a joyous occasion uh, celebrating where we have these branches of these goodly trees we're walking around we're singing psalms and you know where we are um, um, basically just having um, tabernacles in December all right, now the next place that we want to go is over in Deuteronomy and chapter 16 when we start to hear about the Feast of Tabernacles again. Like we said, we want to be comprehensive. Um, so let's go over there and let's look at that right quick. It says uh, in verse 13, Thou shalt observe the Feast of Tabernacles seven days after that hath, thou hast gathered in the corn and the wine. Of course, these are harvest day celebration tabernacles is, whereas Hanukkah is a dedication type um, celebration. Remember, it's all about the dedication of the temple, the dedication of the third temple, no doubt. Verse 14 says, and thou shalt rejoice in thy feast, thou and thy sons and thy daughter and thy maidservant and thy uh, manservant and the Levite and the stranger and the fatherless and the widow that are within thy gates. So everybody in your household, everybody that's in your gates, everybody that's a part of your bubble, which is a word that we're learning here in 2020, um, is are supposed to be participating in this joyous festival. And like we started off this video, you know, talking about how Hanukkah is the replacement for Christmas. So you would have a lot of people who, you know, will be partaking a lot of our family members, at least those that are in our immediate household, will be participating in this joyous um, week-long or eight-day uh, festival. It says, uh, seven days thou shalt keep a solemn feast unto the Lord thy God in the place which the Lord shall choose, because the Lord thy God shall bless thee in all thine increase and in all thy works of thine hands. Therefore, thou shalt surely rejoice. And so this is why we, you know, we do this is because there's blessings associated with these days as well as curses. Um, you know, if you don't do these days um, correctly, um, especially those we read about over in Leviticus 23 and maybe Hanukkah included, you know, um, Maccabees was once included in our Bible. You know, they didn't take it out until, you know, the 1800s. They took out the book of Maccabees. Um, I have, if you have a Bible with the Apocrypha in it. Um, you will see the book of Second Maccabees in there, so it's actually in our Bible, and so we we keep these these holy days, these festival days, um, so we can receive these blessings, and you know, so that's what it's talking about, right? Here. This is one of uh, one um, of the main blessings of the scripture. You know, the Bible it doesn't promise us new cars or wealth or fame or anything like that. The promises of the Bible, you see right here. It says um, that God shall bless thee in thine increase, meaning that, you know, um, you know, the crops that we're trying to grow or the widgets that we're trying to produce or whatever that, that we're trying to do, pro, or do or prosper. You know, we 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 um, we're, if, if, if we're farmers, I, I'm a farmer, so I could think of that. So my cattle will be, you know, doing well. My crops will be doing well. My gardens will be producing food that, you know, the family can eat or whatever. And then the other one, it says, and in all the works of thine hands. Now, this one was a surprise to me not too many years ago that the promises of the Bible is that he will bless your hands, meaning you get kind of like the Midas touch, 
you know, get anything you attempt to do will turn out well, whether it's fixing a car or baking a cake or building a house or whatever it is. He says he will bless all the works of thine hands. Think about that for a second. All the works of your hands will be blessed if we participate in these feast days. And that's why it is that we participate in these feast days. And just as an aside note, you know, for all of those people who, you know, try to say we aren't supposed to be doing these feast days. They're relying on Mr. Charlie for their success. They're relying on the government or they're relying on um, the B systems or they're getting their prosperity in other ways. They're not really they're not really getting their prosperity from, you know, the Lord as we do um, that are keeping these feast days. All right now, there is um, one out of uh, we said we was going to talk about Nehemiah. And we're going to talk about his prayer. But uh, before we do, I want to jump over and show you some verses out of the book called Nehemiah coming out of chapter eight. And um, we're going to start at verse 14. It says, and they found written in the law, which the Lord had commanded by Moses, that the children of Israel should dwell in booths in the feast of the seventh month now this is always interesting you know the whole the whole story of the bible is about of course israel or who they call the jews but you see that their journey was always cyclical meaning you know a lot of times they were prospering and doing well and it but then other times they wasn't doing so well. They was, you know, being persecuted and enslaved. Well, what it boiled down to was their remembrance of the statutes and the feast days. When they were, you know, doing the feast days, they were always, you know, doing well. Like this, like we said, it's all over in the other verse. Their um their their they had increase and they had uh blessings on their hands. But when they stepped away from those feast days, they got curses and they got famine and such. But then always they would remember in the law they were somebody would find the law like they would go read in the bible and they would find exodus chapter 20 through 23 and they would say oh wow here's the here's a here's a book within a book here's the covenant Here's all the rules that the father gave to us. And they would start to, you know, hearken unto those laws and those rules and those statutes and judgments and commandments. And then, of course, they would start prospering again. And here here we are now in 2020. There's a lot of people who are experiencing this, maybe yourself included. And that's why you're looking at this video so you can see how it is that we are supposed to participate in Hanukkah. Because, you know, there has been a revival in your spirit to where now you are starting to embrace these laws again and i would suggest you go over and read them they are in the book of exodus starting in chapter 20 and going all the way through chapter 23 it all finishes at chapter 24 verse 7 that's what's called the covenant the book of the covenant or the law when the messiah was talking about the law that's what he was talking about not all of the not all of the torah genesis through deuteronomy is really only talking about those four chapters, chapter 20, 21, chapter 22, and chapter 23. But anyway, verse 15 says, And that they should publish and proclaim it in all their cities and in Jerusalem, saying, Go forth unto the mount and fetch olive branches and pine branches and myrtle branches and palm branches and branches of thick trees to make booths as it is written. So now, again, you're seeing these branches, guys. So for the individual, the people who are in the cities, um, that don't have access to these trees, um, I, I guess I should have thought about what I was going to give you as a solution before I brought it up. But, you know, you maybe it is that you will, you know, keep the joyous part of it. You know, if you can't find, you know, a tree branch to get, you know, you, you, you make sure that you are in remembrance of the day and doing the best that you can especially keeping the joyous parts or the elements that you can or, or but if you think about it you, you probably can find a tree that you can get a branch off of you know and you know at least participate in that part to to the best of your ability but anyway so the people went forth and brought them and made themselves booths everyone up on the roof of his house and in their courts and in the courts of the house of god and in the streets of the water gate and in the street of the gate of ephraim 
So here it is that we hear about these booths that they're making out of these branches. We didn't really hear about that too much over there in Leviticus and Deuteronomy because, you know, they were sleeping in tents back then. But here it is up in Nehemiah, you know, they're not really sleeping in tents too much. They're sleeping in houses. So they they are taking these branches and kind of making booths out of them and then they're dwelling. So now is this another way that we are to participate in Hanukkah, making of these branches or these trees or whatever you know this is something that we'll probably do for the first time this year usually we sleep in a tent during tabernacles but here it is you know we don't we don't really have to you know sleep in these tents um like we did during tabernacles so we may go the route of you know building these structures out of these tree branches whatever let me see right there in verse 17 it says and all the congregation of them that were come again out of captivity made booths and sat under the booths for since the days of Joshua the son of Nun unto the day had not the children of Israel done so and they there was a very great gladness again this is a day of gladness joy and rejoicing so how do you keep Hanukkah joy and rejoicing you can find some get these tree branches and you know it even go as far as to make it booths if you can um but notice how it says they sat under the booths it, 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 during this time so what does that mean are they sleeping in them i don't know it's saying that they're sitting under the booth or they sat under the booth and this is nehemiah you know so this is you know we got the commandment over in leviticus and deuteronomy and here it is that we're seeing how it is that they or what it is that they actually did with that commandment all right, now we said we was going to talk about this prayer of Nehemiah. So let's jump back over here to uh, uh, 2 Maccabees and chapter 1. This is the same verse where he told us that the um, feast of uh, Hanukkah would be um, the new tabernacles. You know, so this is a big day. Not only did it replace Christmas, but you see, it's some some people are going to look at that verse right there and say that they replaced tabernacles, especially those people who miss tabernacles. They're going to say, hey, I'm doing tabernacles this time. I really didn't miss anything. You know, and I applaud them to doing so because, you know, the scripture is the scripture, you know, that's, 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 that's what it's saying there. But we're going to jump down here and we're going to see this prayer starting in 24 and we're going to close out with it. It says, O Lord, Lord God, creator of all things who are fearful and strong and righteous and merciful and the only and gracious king, the only giver of all things. The only just, almighty, and everlasting, thou that delivers Israel from all trouble, and didst choose the fathers and sanctify them. Receive the sacrifice for thy whole people Israel, and preserve thine own portion, and sanctify it. Gather those together that are scattered from us, deliver them that serve among the heathen, Look upon them that are despised and abhorred, and let the heathen know that thou art our God. Punish them that oppress us, and with pride do us wrong. Plant thy people again in thy holy place, as Moses has spoken. Amen and amen i believe that was it and the priest sung psalms and thanksgiving so that was the prayer of uh nehemiah again you can read that again in uh second maccabees and chapter one but i believe that's all we wanted to cover out of this class um hopefully you got something out of this video if you did um go ahead and hit that like button if you didn't go ahead and hit the dislike button but if you would leave us a comment either way you know if there's something we missed something you know we need coaching on or if you have something you can add or comment or a question or anything please put it down in the comment section below and let's continue this discussion on how it is that we are supposed to celebrate hanukkah and with that i'm gonna say peace unto you shalom